Hello, darlings. It's moi, Hugo Mountbatten, and we are live. Welcome to Wonders of Watches. Cut, 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 cut. It's Watches and Wonders, okay? Oh, terribly sorry. Um, let's go again, shall we? In action. Hello, darlings. It's moi, Hugo Mountbatten, and we are at. Um, um, oh, blast! I've forgotten the line. Some ghastly looking nouveau riche event by the looks of it. Cut, cut, cut. Just do the line, please. Just do the line, okay? Come on, let's go again. Many unbearable hours later. And take 456 action. You might know me from such movies as Jurassic Park. And uh, I'm here at uh, 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 Wondrous Watches, was it? Cut, cut, that's it, forget it. I, I can't work like this. Can, find somebody else. I cannot work like this. This is ridiculous. I studied Shakespeare and I worked with Spielberg. I shall not be talked to in this manner. I'm here at uh, Watch and um, One. Oh my gosh, is that Vacheron over there? Hello. Cut, cut, cut. Everyone, let's take five, please. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. So as I narrate these words in a rather unglamorous clothes closet, the watch world is racing over to Geneva, like the ravenous running zombies in the Dawn of the Dead remake. All eager to engage in a self-congratulatory FOMO echo chamber or horological orgy of consumerist idolatry by collectively wondering at watches. An annual ritualistic convention of supercilious paraculi, oleaginous salespeople, journalistically compromised hype-polluting publications, vapid boiler room speculator types, all there patting themselves on the back and looking at the new releases that us mere mortals, who have to actually work for a living, will not even get to see for sometimes years later. You're just bitterly envious, I hear some of you say. Well, far from it. Now, I've never been happier than right now in my watch collecting journey. And I wanna share with you nine bits of advice, tips, guidelines, if you will, that I've observed from six pieces from my larger collection of, I would say around about two dozen or so pieces in total that will hopefully help you be much happier in your collecting journey. I'll do a quick wristwatch check wearing the forged carbon. Squirrel 183 there, the first generation, having a second honeymoon with this because of the recent controversial review of their new release. Anyway, we're not talking about this, we're talking about trying to help you. And number one, it's Exodus from the hive mind. In order to make these watch collecting and life altering tips work, we must first analyze and understand the toxic group think of the watch world zeitgeist, so you can then be more impervious to it. Resistance is futile. It used to be around March that the previous manifestation of the annual watch hype fest would occur, with the now defunct but historic Basel world, always prompting me to take a few weeks offline to escape all the derivative resulting content that the evil algorithms love to propagate. To me, it makes more sense to cover all the new releases at the end of the year, so that's how I do it. Last April, I went instead to Germany, then Italy, to record some truly never seen before content for those who desire something a little bit more meaningful, unique, culturally and horologically enriched, which is after all what makes this channel unlike any other. Well, at least I hope so. So the first bit of advice, and this might sound painfully obvious, is to seek contentment elsewhere. And while my trip did cost more than a new luxury watch, it was one of the best profoundly unforgettable adventures of my life. Meanwhile, everyone else was like, there was the Hulk, then there was the Batman, then there was the Batgirl. So what are the man babies gonna come up with next? Now it's time for some Rolex predictions. Seriously, 
Porca miseria. We're so devoid of any informative quality content, we have to make things up now. They change the color. My God. Hold the front page. Holy Tadakan, Batman, OMG. It's a Turbion inside a Turbion inside a Turbion with a Turbion cherry on top. This is what I've been missing my whole life. Get that second mortgage. It's time to buy a Turbion. So let's talk about Rolex. Everyone's talking about Rolex. Of course, there's Rolex. Uh, Rolex, of course. What are Rolex up to? Holy Breguet hairsprings. Oh look, another green dial. Wow, my life makes total sense now. Rolex, 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 and more Rolex. Will we see a new bezel on the GMT? <laughs> Number two, new isn't always better. The second step in finding happiness is understanding that the newest of the new is always just more of the old made new. Once you deconstruct any new release, even something truly innovative, it boils down to the fear of missing out the atomic level building blocks of aspirational marketing and manufactured hype. Most likely, there will always be some dastardly clever ducktails money costing innovative technology that is often comically garish in execution in the never ending pissing contest between the haughty torty brands as they continue to try and prove who has the biggest swinging pendulum. See what I did there? Galileo would have been proud of that horological metaphor. This is a overlooked late 90s, early 2000s Panerai Luminor. Now, in my opinion, a really great value proposition because, and I can't believe I'm using that term, feeling queasy, but anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The latest Quaranta version that replaced this only has 100 meters water resistance, substantially more expensive, but with this, you get 300 meters water resistance. Okay, granted, it's an over model, not the in-house movement, blah, 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 but you get that iconic look and the brand heritage and name on the dial. Controversies aside, of course. As we get older, the number of good examples of vintage watches decreases. The 80s and 90s and even the early 2000s now becoming the latest goldmine of neo-vintage gems to plunder, all with fascinating rabbit holes of their own to delve into. These are a few of my pickups from recent years which I really am enjoying. Which brings me on to the next watch of this collection within a larger collection, the Pulchritudinous Meraviglioso Tissot Genero Z199. With a little digging about online, my research led me to discover how the originals of this trailblazing commemorative 90s reissue was based on an Amiga collaboration that inspired the Speedmaster. As well as a connection to record-breaking 1930s aviation, Italian art, history, culture and so much more. Do check out that video if you missed it for something truly illuminating. Moral of the story is that there's still plenty of older gems to dig up and enjoy. New isn't always better. Also, watches are merely a tiny part of horology. From the hidden messages in Holbein's masterpieces, the daring voyages of Kendall's chronometers, to the revolutionary first wristwatch check by Joseph Kudelka. There's a captivating splendor of two millennia in human horological interpretation craftsmanship, design, adoration, engineering and exploration. To say that you are interested in horology and only to talk watches is like saying you're a foodie but then only ever eating McDonald's. There's a big, wonderfully enriching world out there, so why limit your learning and enjoyment? Number three is not caring what others think. As much as it might seem that I'm turning into some kind of Dickensian Scrooge stereotype, I'm not here to poo-poo on anybody's parade, as obscene and satisfying <laughs> as that might be. Quite the opposite. But what I want to say is that you should never be dependent on the opinions of others. You should only seek validation internally, never from anything external or anybody else. And it's fundamental also for your uh, mental health and I think your self-worth. Now, my collection by no means is the most expensive nor the most affordable. Uh, one man's treasure and all of that. It's grail worthy to some, rubbish to others. It's not about value either. 
I never argue with people about watches because your watch hobby is personal, it's your personality, and it's unconscious. You can't deliberately plot out your watch collecting. It grows on its own. It's got a life of its own. It does its own thing, man. It's your friend. I don't know if it's my friend. It can also be your enemy. Have you ever clicked on the mouse at 2 in the morning on a watch you shouldn't have bought? You don't have to be a crazy person on YouTube like me, unless of course you enjoy the masochistic humiliation of constant derision. But it's clear that I don't care what others think of me, and needing to seek the approval of others and focusing on what you love is far more fulfilling. While it might be fun to be in the owner's club, in my opinion, it's more rewarding and takes more character to stand by oneself. The joy of missing out. The zombie metaphor I used earlier highlights the lack of individuality, the mindless danger of group thinking and blind instant gratification. What are they doing? Why do they come here? Some kind of instinct, memory, what they used to do. This was an important place in their lives. Ultimately, that's what George Romero amongst other things, was commenting on with his cinematic masterpieces, for those intelligent enough to actually get it, of course. With an open mind, deeper research, and a more profound understanding, comes a greater appreciation of all things. Every classic great self-help book, from The Five Rings, The Best of Robert Greene, to Man's Search for Meaning, the classic Stoics, and beyond, they all, at some point, speak of this. Forget the opinions of people online you don't know, the pressures of this keeping up with the Philistines trash culture, the manufactured hype from the industry plants on social media, who, let's be honest, are direct profiteers of said hype, because they want to sell the latest releases in their own watch store. It's no accident that brands often give them access to the new stuff first, and not independent channels like yours truly. Number four, try something different. My next watch in my sextuplet is my Seiko Willard. Despite being a massive movie nerd and a fan of Conrad's highly problematic book that Apocalypse Now was loosely based upon, I actually put off reviewing modern interpretations of the iconic 6105 for donkey's years, simply because I thought it was too big. And like Steve Buscemi in Fargo, kind of funny looking. You've heard of Colonel Walter E. Kurtz? Um, yes sir, I've heard the name. Besides, it was a poetically symbolic horological foil to the movie's Rolex-wearing villain, Colonel Kurtz, who, for some reason, I actually identify with far more than Captain Willard. You can read into that as much as you want. He's out there operating without any decent restraint. The Willard taught me to go beyond my comfort zone and the importance of trying different things. I borrowed one from Seiko authorized dealer, my friends Moya Fine Jewelers, to review. While far from perfect, do check out the video for more, I fell for its charming, ingenious, ergonomic design and subsequently pulled the trigger. The very same thing can be said for my Universal Genève White Shadow, designed by Genta that went on to inspire the Ellipse, which is now my favorite Patek. But it remains the affordable hidden gem original, with a unique story of its own, including a micro rotor inside, that in conclusion, I never expected to love so much. Talking of trying new things, my Panerai Luminor, a brand I didn't really get before. And of course, like I always say, experience is the best form of education, so don't knock it until you've tried it. And now it's one of my most treasured, most worn watches in the collection. Pazzesco. Pazzesco.
Number five is that priceless personal touch of attaching sentimental feelings and memories to heighten your love, relationship and longevity with a timepiece. I feel the magic of Firenze every time I put on my Panerai, which of course stops me from selling it. I can almost smell the mix of freshly baked schiacciata, espresso and faint whiff of cigarettes that seems to be all over Italy. If I really concentrate I can even hear the cacophony of motorini beeps, expensive designer shoes walking on cobblestones and the bells of the Basilica di San Lorenzo that I used to live near. It's an ineffable, warm, fuzzy feeling of serenity that means more to me than any new watch or an infatuation for a new watch. Number six is fools rushing in and the subsequent hidden costs. This is very simple. It's basically don't rush in to the thrill of the next hunt. Savor it. It will feel all the more sweeter when you finally get that grail you have been diligently working so hard to save for or the watch you have been stalking for months just to get the right one. Life is already too full of compromises. Resist the primordial whims of your prefrontal cortex and slow down to get what you really truly love, not a fast fling. And I'm still talking about watches, by the way. These dalliances can result in inevitable disappointment of instant gratification, or worse, just mistaken impulse purchases, and watches that end up costing more in either servicing rarer pieces with difficult to source components. I got very lucky with my Tissot, Panerai and Tudor, as they all have off-the-shelf ETAs or value based, and therefore with a good independent watchmaker not costly to maintain. The same cannot be said for their newer in-house replacements. But when it is time to play the capolavoro The Thrill Is Gone by the legendary B.B. King and featuring the great Tracy Chapman, love does fade. But if it's all about buying for the experience, a loss of selling on might not be a big deal. But value retention is something if you do flip a lot and don't have deep pockets, something you might want to keep in mind. Okay, tip number seven is do not underestimate a quick change of strap. The Tudor Submariner here, the monochromatic color scheme, the uh, versatile design, by definition a strap monster, but it changes completely. You put it on a Collareb, the vintage distressed handmade from uh, Italy here, from Holborn's, and it feels more vintagey. Put it on a NATO strap and never underestimate the safety of a Zulu or a single pass through or anything like this. Like my uh, Valor strap, transforms its functionality. You get a second lease of life and immediately it feels like a new watch <laughs> in the end saves you a lot of money the same could be said for rubber i mean it transformed the waffle strap on my t183 here the forged carbon it really just brought a whole new level of functionality and uh, enjoyment to the watch simple advice but trust me it absolutely works Start doing my jog. As always, I have my trusty mud man and my Panerai. I'm always doubling these two. A watch collection on one wrist. By the way, I'm sorry if I'm out of breath. Number eight, finding enjoyment in the simple things. The last of my six watches of enlightenment or my six piece happy place is this humble, super functional, hard as nails and ingeniously designed mud man. It's another repurchase and explored in a recent video deep dive. It's my favorite G-Shock and second favorite Casio, nipping closely at the heels of the mighty $40 Mission Impossible DW290. It absolutely does it all and then some. With the compelling power of less is so much more, no watch is as battle proven or tougher for a measly 70 bucks that will also outlast any quick to age disposable smartwatch. But beyond its retrolicious nostalgia evoking looks and prestigious military adoption, most importantly, it reminds me just how much fun can be had for not very much money at all. I connect with the Mudman, dare I say it, it has a soul and I found that 
I bond with it even more than like smart watches or even some of my mechanical and automatic pieces. That inexplicable connection, it definitely has it for me. Number nine, enjoy. Ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? If you're watching this, you are already doing better than most living organisms in the unforgivingly violent, unrelenting struggle that is the reality of our tiny orbiting rock of contradictions as we spin around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour in an infinite void of eternal rest. We must all learn to stop worrying and love the bomb. Maybe it's just my own repeated brushes with death in an ICU, breathing from machines to live, that makes me think this way. There's nothing like profound trauma to make you reframe absolutely everything and see how it's enjoying what you have that rarely counts. Anyways, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Oh, isn't that cute? Oh, look at that. Isn't that adorable? I'm telling you all this stuff, not to try and be a tough guy or something like that, but every time I was stuck in that hospital bed or recovering or in ICU with tubes going in my side, all I wanted to do was get outside, enjoy everything that is free and wonderful, birds singing, you know, I just wanted to go for a jog, you know, and as much as this is a cliche, sure, there's a lot of darkness and misery in the world, but if you're watching this, you're in the 1% of the 1%, and I'm not talking about monetary, socioeconomics and all of that. I'm talking about just being able to enjoy life, you know? I don't take anything for granted. I enjoy every second, so. But it's simple, enjoy what you have. Because just like everyone, and everything you have ever known or will know, it returns to stardust before you know it. With that macabre thought, I'll leave it there. If you love your watches and enjoy this free independent content, hit that like button. Let me know your keys to happiness in watch collecting in the comments down below. I will catch you in the next one. Be safe, savor every moment. Onwards and upwards. Thank you for watching. Ciao. What do you mean I don't get a free watch? Don't these humans know who I am?